Hello everyone. Welcome to this first class and the orientation session of ACCA uh, Advanced Performance Management. This is Rizwan Mania, your instructor for this course APM. Now, I welcome you all to the first class of APM and I am really happy, excited to start my new session for March 24 with you guys. I hope <coughs> you will be super active, super excited and together we will work so hard, so hard that we'll try to pass this exam in March 24 attempt. So guys, are you all with me? A quick confirmation, everyone by saying yes. Okay, great. Thank you uh, for the confirmation. Let's now begin with the session. <clears throat> First of all, about myself, uh, my teaching experience uh, is more than now 16 years. So I'm into this ACCA field since more than 16 years and I teach uh, PM performance management, financial management and advanced performance management. Uh, <clears throat> I have taught a lot of students locally and internationally currently also doing from the WIFI's platform. WIFI is an ACCA Gold ALP approved learning partner. Uh, for online delivery. So at WIFI, it is our uh, it is our main priority to focus on providing best quality education to the students. And uh, this is what I do in my papers. This is what other faculty members do in their papers. And we give our best in order to ensure that our students do pass in any attempt that they are appearing for. So, uh, <clears throat> I have conducted eight performance management webinars for ACCA uh, under the brand name of P2P, if you have heard about Prepare to Pass. So, uh, guys, as I was saying that I've conducted lots and lots of webinars for ACCA Pakistan under the brand name of P2P, Prepare to Pass, and uh, uh, those webinars were useful for the students. So, we thought to continue with those webinars and that's why from WIFI's platform, we always conduct webinar every quarter for all the papers that we offer. Okay. Now, to start things first, I really want to first give you the uh, clarity that advanced performance management, the paper that you chose is a very, very good paper. You have to be confident about it. The choice is a very good choice. You just make sure that you stick to the plans, you cover things that I'll tell you, you, you cover the plans according to the things that I'll mention, so you will be in a good position to pass. Yes, the technical knowledge itself is not very much, I would say in APM, yeah, it is, but uh, it's manageable. It's more of a uh, common sense, I would say, that you have to apply. But obviously, it's not that you uh, can go outside the scope of the topic or the areas, but common sense in the sense that you should have the ability to read the questions well. So any student who is able to read the questions well, any student who has the ability to read the questions well, uh, definitely will be in a very solid position to pass APM. So let's begin and let's move on to the uh, next slide we have which is what experience i have about this paper so according to my experience it's a very good paper as i always say and if you guys plan to work strategically if you want to work uh, in some strategic management position then this paper uh, is a one that should help you this paper is a one that will help you uh, and this basically will prepare you for the strategic positions. So I'll just tell you uh, later on that uh, what kind of scope will be, uh, uh, what kind of a scope is needed in APM uh, once we move ahead. Third uh, and second point that you have is those who understand the question requirements well. Now, those students who understand the question requirements well for them, again, APM is a good one because you guys uh, can understand the question requirements uh, and 
if still you are not good at don't worry i will give you that extra information i will give you that extra knowledge uh, through which you can easily pick the question requirements i'll make it so easy uh, by breaking the questions into verbs and the objects that would make your life really easy but yes if someone is already good at yeah you are in a good position third is the writing skills yes those who think that this is a calculative paper it's not the case it is not the calculative paper at all this is a paper that is more dependent on the writing skills which means the way you write is something that is very important for you so your writing skills will matter a lot which means you uh, should be able to draft the answers well now if you already have that skill in your bag you have a very good chance but if you lack that skill so don't worry don't worry the drafting part the mindset how to write the answer what is needed to be written what is not needed to be written all that guidance will be given by me so the purpose of mentioning this here is that these are the core things to focus on and that is number one as i said that you have to focus uh, on the questions uh, number two uh, read the requirements well and third is the writing capability is what is needed now if you are a bit weak we can start with a quick practice from day one and as you practice more and more and more and more you automatically uh, will uh, get better and you will learn a lot so yeah that's what i think about this paper now moving towards how apm is different to performance management obviously everybody knows that uh, apm uh, is basically a step up of pm right so performance management is one paper that you guys have covered earlier uh, and there are so many topics that you would again see coming up in apm but you have to be clear about this that it will not be the same way as they were tested before let me just tell you a quick list of the topics like for example uh starting with balance scorecard you you know what balance scorecard is number two building block model you know what building block model is uh, then you have some areas of budgets uh, some areas of variances uh, then there are certain techniques that you have covered at your pm level like abc uh, like target costing uh, like life cycle costing uh, like quality cost uh, so these are the few areas that i just written here just to give you the idea that you would again see these areas coming up in apm now first thing before anyone thinks about this that those who came here uh, by taking exemptions in apm so i would really want to ask right now from the audience how many of you uh, are right now planning to give apm and you have gotten some kind of an exemption uh, in your previous paper especially performance management anyone with the exemptions uh, anyone who got exempted with pm okay yeah so i can see here there are few students who have mentioned that they uh, got exempted uh, as far as the pm is concerned so that's fine one thing you have to keep in your mind see why would acca give you any sort of exemption the question is very simple why acca would give you any sort of exemption because acca believes that from some other qualification if you are coming towards acca so you must have covered that particular area in your some other qualification that is obviously a common sense thing which means it's not that you haven't heard about these things in your previous qualification this is the first thing i want to bring in front of you obviously somewhere uh, you have covered this in your previous qualification secondly even if you haven't covered certain areas so you don't have to be worried about that at all now why is because 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 you uh, if haven't covered anything so the way i've structured my portal the way i've structured my content 
uh, automatically you will be able to have a good grip over the basics as well. So whenever I start teaching, whenever I start uh, teaching any particular topic and if that topic is already connected with some other previous topic. So I do start with the basics to make sure that students do uh, take care of the basics. They recap that and those who came from exemptions, they are able to learn that as well. So first thing I wanted to clear this. Now, as majority is coming from uh, the ACC background, they have given PM. So for them, this is very important to understand that 65%, I would say, the topics that you're going to see, 60 to 65% topics that you will uh, see in APM uh, actually relates to performance management. But the major thing is that the way these will be tested is totally different. Okay. So you can see here performance management test students' capability uh, in terms of application and analysis. Okay application of an analysis but here the focus is on evaluation now this is a very key term for APM and I will explain this term as we move on today so the focus is on evaluation uh, so when you were at PM level it was more about application and analysis of those techniques but here it's about evaluation of those techniques and definitely as I said I will do uh, give you the idea about evaluation. So it's a greater focus. It's, a, it's an advanced level. Obviously, uh, considering advanced level, you must consider that, yes, this is what one needs to take into account. Done. <clears throat> now, second is uh, its, its resemblance with paper SBL, strategic business leader. Okay, just a minute, please. Okay, now before I before I uh, go towards its resemblance with SBL, first of all, I want now you to uh, after giving you the idea about PM and APM, and you need to step up. Now I want to first give you a proper role. Uh, what is your role in APM? What your examiner expect from you in APM? So remember you are being assigned with a proper role and that role is that you are a consultant. Yes, it's very important to remember that you are a business consultant. So when I say a business consultant, which means you are a consultant, your position in APM is of a consultant and who is a consultant? Now, if I uh, uh, give you certain examples, like a doctor is also a consultant. Uh, you have tax consultants as well. Uh, so you have so consultant in different business areas, right? So right now you are a management consultant. Uh, your position here is of a management consultant uh, in advanced performance management. Now, just to give you the idea how important the role of a consultant is in anybody's life is by starting with a very basic example and that basic example is of a doctor. Now, if you go to a doctor, if you are not well, if you are sick, you go to the doctor. When you go to the doctor, you what you do there? So, any ideas what we do when we go to the doctor? Uh, yes, anyone please? What you do when you go to the doctor? So there is no one to reply me because uh, you you think you don't know what, what you do when you go to the doctor. So once we go to the doctor, yeah, you tell your problems. Exactly. So you tell your problems. What are you, uh, what problem are you facing? Uh, is it a problem related to your heart or your mind, your body, uh, legs, hands, whatever it is. So you basically tell the problem and then the doctor further investigates that. Now, how doctor will investigate? Doctor will ask you further questions in order to come up to certain symptoms and blah, 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 so many things. In the end, what doctor does? After diagnosing your problem, after understanding your problem, the doctor comes up with a plan, an advice or a consultation that, okay, <coughs> this is what you have to do. This is what you don't have to do. So doctor comes up with 
certain sort of a consultation. And that consultation includes maybe giving you the medicines or some exercise and blah, 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 blah. Now, after paying doctor the heavy fees, right, you come back and if you don't follow the prescription given by the doctor, do you think that would work for you? Do you think that uh, uh, remedy that you need, you will get that remedy? Not at all, right? You won't get that remedy because you just took the doctor's appointment, you went to the doctor, but you're not following the doctor's instructions. So my friends, I really want to give you the clarity in relation to that, that you are wasting your money. This means you don't, you don't uh, have the confidence over the doctor or there is some problem with, in your mind. Similarly, anyone who follows the doctor's prescription and normally 90% of the people would do, so why do they follow the prescription? Because they believe somewhere in their heart that doctor is a consultant, doctor is an expert, doctor has the know-how of all the aspects of that particular disease or any other disease, doctor knows what the results of the reports are, so you consider that doctor to be a consultant and you follow the instruction of the doctor. So as you follow the instruction of the doctor, similarly, management consultant is a business doctor. You are a business doctor. Soon uh, before the exam or maybe on the day of exam, you will become a business doctor, which means uh, same as you went to the doctor, as you were the patient, similarly, businesses that are having different sort of diseases in form of uh, some business low profit disease, bad management disease, uh, not having good uh, uh, strategies in the organization, something like that, not having good KPIs or CSFs. So those businesses would come to you and similarly, uh, as you explained your problem, they will explain to you your, their problems. Uh, as doctor first that asked the questions and understood your situation, similarly, you would understand their situation. But the difference is, that you will physically go to the doctor, the client, your client, your business patient would not come to you physically, but they will come to you through the examination. They would come to you in form of questions in your paper. So it's the same thing. The role is same. You have to understand the business. You have to understand what the problems they are facing. And then you have to come up with your advices, your consultations, your evaluations, your suggestions, your justifications. And this is a similar work which actually was done by the doctor. Now you go to the doctor. So what you want? You want a value, valuable advice from the doctor. You need any type of an advice that creates value for you, right? Similarly, similarly, my friends, whatever advice you give to the business, so that should be a value adding advice for the business as well. So I hope you are clear about this, what I've said here. And I'm pretty much sure that all these things is giving you the idea that in short, your role is a very key role. And as general physician uh, deals with so many diseases you are a general physician of the business so you will have to deal with so many different clients maybe from pharmaceutical maybe from some other service industry from clothing brand or an airline company a shipping company uh, an education company and any online business so any sort of a client can come to you for the business advice. So that is why I say this paper is a huge paper. It builds your knowledge uh, considering different perspectives and different industry knowledge is what you get through this paper. And after this, you are in a position to work uh, in, you are in a position uh, to work as a strategic consultant. You work with the board of directors. You can work at, at any organization at the top level because you know how to improve the business performance. Yes, there are two words that I want to bring in front of you. One is the business performance. 
is what you look at and uh, any business uh, will perform well if there is a proper management uh, of that performance which means the paper is performance management so what you have to do you have to learn how to manage the business well and this management includes dealing with uh, different challenges the business is facing and dealing with uh, different pressures the business is facing and coming up with these solutions for that so my friends to make it simple you are a management consultant now one thing i need to uh, add here also this paper develops your skills to become a business owner why because business owner is a person who definitely needs to have complete grip over their business all the aspects of the business should be well covered by the business owner so business owner looks at each and every angle of the looks at each and every angle of the business whether the business is going good financially whether the business is going good non financially this means if you want to become future entrepreneurs you can definitely take benefit from this paper as well because it covers all the business internal aspects and prepares you for a, a successful entrepreneur as well so my friends a good scope i would say the paper has and one thing i will definitely uh, uh, let you know at the end not right now once i move ahead i will give you a very important uh, biggest advantage of apm but not right now as i move ahead i will let you know so i hope the the clarity is there come on from today you are not just peter you are not just anna you are not just uh, x you are not just y you are a business consultant and to take the responsibility of that i want you guys to just write in the chat box who are you from today who are you guys everybody should write please okay so great so i can see a lot of students responding so from today you are a business consultant and that's the best part so being a consultant let's now understand what is the difference between apm and sbl now so friends first of all there are two groups of students right now might be taking the class and i just want to uh, ask uh, those students as well now first one uh, how many students here are those who uh, are those who uh, have done with their sbl or done are done with the sbl please can you just quickly tell me those who are done with the sbl those who are done with the sbl okay now those who are done with the sbl you have a good news if you are appearing for apm now the other question how many of you how many of you are not done with the are not done with sbl will give sbl maybe in march or maybe in june p1 p3 same okay now we have a very small quantum those who will give sbl uh, uh, after apm but we have a large quantum here who are giving who have already given sbl and now giving apm first of all i have good news for both of the students i have good news for both group of the students the first one those who will appear okay let's start with the one those who will give apm now and give, have given sbl listen <clears throat> 20 to, to 25% of the topics 20 to 25% of the topics like porter's five forces like pest analysis like stakeholder metrics like bcg metrics like sort analysis like benchmarking okay and others as well these what you have covered in sbl so the good news for those students who are done with sbl is that you have the basics in your mind as far as these models are concerned that's the positive thing right that is the positive thing 
Now, after positive come negative, comes negative. What is the negative thing? The mindset that you have, the mindset that you have in SBL is something different and will not work in APM. Okay, that's strange and uh, seems to be dangerous as well. It seems that you will be worried about it. The positive is the basics are there. Everybody knows what Porters is, what Pest is and blah, blah, blah. But what about the change of the mindset? For that, you are at the right place. Rizwan Mania will ensure that I change your mindset. I change your mindset from SBL to APM. Now, how will I do this? <clears throat> my portal, the content, my material is recorded in such a way or even the live classes that I take. My message is very clear that I start with the basic explanation of the model like this is Porter or this is Pest or this is BCG or this is SWOT. Then I will explicitly mention that now the perspective of SWOT, Pest, BCG, stakeholder, benchmarking in APM is different. <clears throat> so I do give the clarity. <clears throat> I repeat. I do give the clarity what mindset needs to be followed. So I prepare you well and change the mindset from SBL to APM. So don't worry. There is a drawback, but the answer to that drawback is RM, Rizwan Mania. Okay. Now, that's my work. That's my job. Now, those who haven't done SBL, what is the good news? That you haven't done SBL. So, there is nothing to be changed. No mindset change required. Good, positive thing. What is the negative point? What is the negative point? That you don't have the basics in your mind. You don't have the basics in your mind. Basics are not clear. Okay. You don't have that prerequisite knowledge with you. Okay. So what we gonna do then, sir? Let me answer. The way I have recorded or I'll take my classes, my material is in such a way that I start with the basics. I first teach what Porter's five forces mean. I first teach what PEST is. I first teach what stakeholder matrix is. I first teach what BCG matrix is. And after that, I will tell how this will come in APM. So like this, I am covering the drawbacks of both the group of students by catering both the group of students and their needs. And this makes you indifferent whether you have given the SBL or you haven't given SBL. Understood? To make it very simple, especially for those who have already done with SBL, SBL was about SBL was about various ways of analyzing and looking at its environment, resources, capabilities, structure, culture, and etc. APM has a more accounting focus. More accounting focus. The focus of APM is on improving the business performance. Improving the business performance. And that is why APM is different to SBL. Now, a basic one example for those who are already done with SBL. Porter's five forces. 
for example there are five forces come on can you guys tell me the names of those five forces can you guys please tell me the names of those five forces all the sbl students okay bargaining power of customers suppliers threats of new entry right <clears throat> right so it's threat of new entrants threat of substitutes bargaining power of customers bargaining power of suppliers and competition within the industry right now you were using this porter's five forces model in sbl to actually figure out that if you want to invest in certain industry in that industry is the threat of new entry high or low is the threat of substitute high or low is the bargaining power of supply customer high or low and through this you were able to come up to a conclusion that is that industry competitive for us or not will will we be able to earn more in that industry or not will we become king in that industry or not in APM, the same Porter's five forces will focus on mainly two things. <laughs> Number one, and the first one is what I'll focus more on. You are working in an industry. As a consultant, you will look at these five types of pressures the business is facing you are already in that industry so as a consultant you have to come up with the advice to your client how to handle the pressures if the threat is high so what actions you should take how should you how this would how this is going to impact your business performance and its management and what actions you should take to overcome those the first scope what actions to take how it gonna affect you as a business and what actions can you take to prevent this or minimize its effect number two what key performance indicators you might have heard about this word before kpis what kpis you need to focus on to manage these pressures now i'm not going into the details of kpis because this is all what you're going to learn with time what csfs are what kpis are so basically the same model will be used now by the consultant to actually advise their clients how to manage these pressures how to measure these pressures how to manage these pressures how to measure these pressures and we call this as performance management and performance measurement so that's the focus that's the difference so i'm sure those who are right now in the session who are done with SBL, they can easily contrast the difference. This is what I just wanted to tell you. So anyways, 60 to 65% area comes from PM, the remaining comes from SBL mainly and this is how the total course material for APM has been structured. But with me, I will cover all the angles, I will cover all aspects that are important for the student to learn before they appear for the exam. Understood? Okay. 
So your syllabus is divided into four sections. Do remember these four key sections. Our portal content covers all these four important syllabus areas of APM. Okay. So once you will cover the entire portal content, as always, I conduct a grand revision or a summary and through that grand revision that I conduct at the end, I easily link these four syllabus areas with all the content that you have covered on the portal. To give you the clarity about their links and about the coverage of the portal. Okay. Right. Now, your paper is structured into two sections. Section A is a compulsory area, <clears throat> compulsory area of 50 marks. These 50 marks includes 40 technical marks and 10 professional marks. Professional marks were introduced in September 22. And when they were introduced, and when they were introduced, so I can easily say that these professional marks are so useful, so important, just like a wow. So useful, so important that through these you can easily pass the paper. How? Because for me, it's like buy 40 and get 10 free. Buy 40 and get 10 free. Free, free, free. You love free things, right? If you still think I am joking, I'll prove it once I'll start the questions in the past papers. Okay. So I'll come to these professional skills. So this is the breakup of the first section in comprising of 50 mark question. Now the three business areas A, B, C. So the first question will come from business, sorry, with from syllabus area A, B and C <coughs> as it is written here. Okay. Done. Section B comprises of two compulsory questions of 25 marks each. Here again, 20 are the technical marks and 5 are free professional marks. So it's like buy 20, get 5 free. Done. Done. So it's a 100 mark paper and all the questions are compulsory. <clears throat> I hope this is clear to all of you. Right. Now, the professional skills that we were talking about includes communication skills, includes analysis and evaluation skill, includes skepticism skill, includes commercial acumen skill. You can watch my separate video on Wifi's YouTube channel for understanding the four skills in detail generally. But as I start my sessions, as I teach, I do explain about communication, analysis, evaluation, skepticism and commercial acumen in detailed way. And I do tell students how to grab marks relating to these four headings from the scenario. So if you follow the instructions, if you follow my techniques, you can grab these easy 20 marks, 20 marks out of 100 in your APM. 10 related to section A 
and 10 relates to section B. Understood? Okay. So, I hope the paper pattern is clear to all of you. Now, just to quickly show you the APM specimen paper. So, if you guys go to your practice platform, you know what practice platform is. And if you just look at the specimen paper of APM, so here it is. So, let's have a look. As I just explained to you, first section A comprised of 50 mark question with exhibits on one side of the screen and the summary given on the other side. Okay, that's a 50 mark question where you can see the requirements here, the 50 mark requirements. Where it is clearly mentioned 10 are for the professional area, 40 are for these requirements. And what are we writing? We are writing a report to the CEO. So, we are reporting to the CEO. I will teach you how to draft the answer. I teach in such a way that I go into the details of how to start 50 mark question what million dollar points to follow, what to copy, what to paste, everything, how to break the requirements, everything. Okay. We have two response options, word processor, which will be mainly used for drafting the answer and sometimes if there are calculations for spreadsheets. Section B, 25 mark question, similar way. Requirement you can see here, and they have mentioned it clearly the professional marks and the technical marks split, and the next question of 25 mark. So, this is how your paper look like, and this is what you guys need to follow in an examination as well. Understood? Right. <clears throat> yes. All the four professional skills, communication, analysis, evaluation, commercial acumen and skepticism will come in your first 50 mark question. But in section B, in section B questions, communication skill will not be tested because you are not writing a report. Okay, that relates to report mainly. So, communication skill will not be tested. So, you are left with 3. Now, out of 3, it will be a possibility that all 3 will be tested or either 2 will be tested as you can see here. Analysis and evaluation and commercial acumen is being tested here. Skepticism is not available. Okay. But in the previous 25 mark question, if you see, they, I think, let me check. Here, they yeah, required you to demonstrate all the three skills. So, either two or three, but communication will not be tested in 25 mark questions. Correct? So, this gave you the idea about the paper structure. Now, the most commonly used examinable verbs in APM. Evaluate, justify. Now, these are low level verbs which were more used when you were at PM level or skill module. These are high level verbs which you expect at APM level. With evaluation at the top, the most important one. Now, what is evaluate? Evaluate means to judge. Judge. So, I always say how 
the judge in the court gives the judgment they evaluate the situation how how simple they require facts from both the lawyers one who is supporting in favor and other who is against the case so facts are gathered by the one who is in favor of the case facts are gathered by the one who is against the case and then the judge decides looking at the evidences how strong they are gives a judgment in favor of one party evaluation looking at the positive aspects looking at the negative aspects and giving the judgment this is evaluation so a similar work we need to perform at apm level that is the scenario will be given to us and if we are required to evaluate certain thing we we'll look at the positive angles of that negative angles of that and then we can come to some kind of a conclusion the most tested verb evaluation justify second most used you need a car your boss is not giving you one fine morning your boss gave you the opportunity by saying okay if you need the car justify its use for you and the business now what verb the boss used justify so what you going to do will you hold back and sit or you will come up with what come on you justify me if you need a car so you will come up with all the valid reasons you think are important to give the other party the impression that this car is very useful for you like i'll be at office on time this is a proper justification the car is something we can use for our business needs that can help our clients and pace up the work see justifications so you will try to come up with all the valid reasons that related are relevant to the business and you will give your strong message that you need this thing justify so similarly my friends my consultants when you are dealing with the scenario you also have to justify it and how will you do this by looking at the business scenario understanding the client's need and then you will say okay considering your needs you should go with it because of these justifications now let me tell you a very simple thing if you follow the verbs if you follow the verbs if you follow the requirements in the right way you get the professional marks automatically see how simple this is now you might be thinking how this is possible i'll give you one example one just one one of the professional skills is analysis and evaluation now analysis means finding out the facts to drill down to find out the facts by using some calculations and those facts are then used for your evaluation as well which means coming up with positive points and negative points so listen if the examinable verb is to evaluate 
So you will find the positive things and the negative things and you will come up to your conclusion. You will get technical marks for evaluation. You will get technical marks for evaluation. Whatever those are, maybe 10, 15, whatever. But if you have done that evaluation in a balanced way, if you considered all the available positive, pos positive possibilities, negative possibilities, if you have done that evaluation in a balanced way, if you have done a balanced assessment of the situation, so over the technical marks for evaluation, you are also getting additional bonus marks under the heading of analysis and evaluation. Interesting. It's like buy one, get two free. So for the same evaluation, you are getting technical marks. But if you have if you have done that in a proper balanced way, you are getting additional marks under the heading of tell me analysis and evaluation. This is how simple it is. This is how easy it is. Another example, what is commercial acumen? Commercial acumen means whatever thing you look at, you should consider the relevancy of that thing from the business perspective. Commercial acumen means you cannot just stick to the financial numbers. You have to consider the non-financial aspects as well. It's not just about numbers every time. It's not just about figures every time. Consider non-financial aspects as well. Now, let me tell you. You were asked to justify the need for your the need for the car. So to justify. Will you come up with all the relevant points related to the business? To justify it, you will come with all the relevant examples related to the business. I use the word examples. Like, I'll be on time at office. We can use the car for our own business. We can serve our clients in a better way. This will improve our business reputation, effectiveness. So you are using examples related to your own business. You are using examples related to your own business needs and your own business improvements. You are talking from the perspective of your business. You are justifying from the perspective of your business. Using all those relevant words, relevant jargons, relevant examples related to the business, coming up with business related justification, which is practical, achievable, that is something you can implement as well. And as I say practical, it clearly means you cannot come up with some points that are not justifiable or out of the box. So if you come up with something which is practical, achievable, you can implement that. You are doing a good justification. Don't you think that? So you will get marks under the heading of justification, the technical marks. But because such a justification included your business examples, those are practical examples, achievable examples. You use your business case. You use your business situation well. You use your relevant, you use the technical relevant jargons for that. You are demonstrating that you have the understanding of the business and its needs. You are getting bonus marks under the heading of commercial equity. It's like again, buy one, get two free. For the justification, you have to do all these things to make a justification look valid. But you are being awarded twice for the same work that you are doing. 
which means if you follow the requirements well professional marks will automatically run and catch you from behind so these are actually running your running uh, behind you you are running by technical marks they are following you if you correctly answer the technical requirements i'm sure this video this clarity this connection of verbs requirements with professional marks will make it really easy for you to understand how simple this is did you like did you like this explanation everyone understood this yes or no i'm sure the way i tried to relate that it should give you a lot more better understanding okay so that is how verbs and its importance in apm is and connected with professional marks guys what's your feedback understood yes or no happy so far so this is what apm is about it's so easy so easy yes it's easy i know people discourage you i know people come up with negative points about apm it's all rubbish i always say this to everybody i always say this to everybody that this pre paper prepares you to become a business owner now owner is a person who employs four types of people okay for a good huge business you need a good financial accountant which means you need a person who is done with sbr and at wifi we prepare you for sbr whatever we come up with we come up with the best solution for that so sbr you you employ a person who 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 is a good accountant then you employ a person who is a good financial manager and that person is your afm then you employ a person who tells you how to save tax so you require a good tax consultant in form of atx and then to ensure that your shareholders are happy you employ or you take the services of a person who provides you audit services and that's why you require advance audit and assurance services wow the question is where is apm you have sbr you have afm you have atx where is you have a triple a where is apm apm is the business owner apm is the business owner sbl is the business owner so these two papers are so important so important as it prepares you for business owners and you then will pay salaries to sbrs and afms and atx and triple a's happy come on are you happy now that the choice that you made is not a bad one okay and that's a fact to be honest so now coming to what's our teaching methodology how we teach at wifi wifi came into existence since last 5 years from day 1 as i am also running the show at wifi as a ceo i started with just 7 to 8 students of apm since then 
we have maintained high standards for quality. We try our best and APM really works for me. It's not just APM. It includes SBL, SBR, AFM, ATX, AAA, any paper of skill is what we ensure we provide a similar service to one that I'm just discussing right now. It doesn't matter who is teaching. It matters the methodology that we follow. So if teacher with our methodology comes into play, it becomes a huge success for students. So now listen, we offer recorded sessions based on learning glass technology where we teach through the help of animations through the through through examples that are animated examples those animations will make your understanding easier when i say car you see the car when i say rain you see the rain and it's not just APM, every paper we use animations. Then we have live sessions that I conduct on a weekly basis. And these are practice sessions, thorough practice sessions. Six minimum sessions is what I conduct in APM every week. <clears throat> now these live sessions are very important because for these two, we give you a planner. <clears throat> now this planner gives you a clear deadline in the targets to complete the recorded content before any respective live class. Now why is that important? This is important because it is important because the learning glass lectures is what you prepare and see first and then you come to the live class it becomes more relevant for you so we plan things and give you the plans accordingly then you have e notes available which includes detail notes and uh, summary notes is what i will be increasing this time as well then we have a very good TTA model for you. Now, what is our TTA model? I want to explain you our TTA model in a very detailed way. So, basically, what TTA model actually stands for? This is what you have to understand. <clears throat> the first T in the TTA model is test yourself. Now, the first T in the TTA model is test yourself. Where you will test yourself to gain the confidence where you stand. So, after doing certain amount of practice, after attending certain live sessions, there will be a section in front of you by the name of test yourself, where we will give you certain time limit to complete the question on your own. There will be no one to help you because time management for any paper of ACC is extremely important. So from day one, we want you to ensure time management. So these are time bounded sessions by the name of test yourself. Fine. Once you are done with test yourself, now you will be in a position to uh, check where you stand. So we will give you the video answer of that as well in the recorded form. And you can compare what went wrong. Were you good enough to complete this? And you will learn a lot of more things. The second T is testing platform, which is the ACCA's testing platform that is available to you guys. That is the platform where you have to practice more and more. The more you type, the more you type, Using the testing platform, the more used to you become to the environment. So yes, all the practice that you do should be done on the testing platform. I hope you are getting the point because you have to become used to the software. 
Third, A, assignments. After every live class that we conduct, we will give you one assignment with one week's deadline that you have to do on testing platform. You will submit us the assignment after one week. We will mark those assignments and we'll give you the feedback. So what this will do, this will prepare you, give you the idea as to what needs to be done after the assignments and you have to cover those, all the lackings that you will be notified with. So this is our TTA model. And this model will give you the confidence before examination. Done? Now, after that, after that, you have mocks, two mocks with two brief debriefs. We'll check and we'll give you the feedback. Then we have performance tracking. There will be a separate teacher assistant with you who will be tracking your performance. Now, this performance tracking is a unique feature at WIFI where our TAs monitor your performance on a regular basis. They check your performance and after every 15 days, they will give you the idea where you are and as the planners are given, so you can easily understand areas where you are lagging behind. Because at WIFI, we care for you. Then you have grand revisions. In the last month, there will be three minimum sessions of revisions where we'll do practice plus entire revision of the syllabus will be done. So these three sessions approximately for nine to 10 hours will be very good for you in the last month as far as the revision is concerned. Okay. And at the last, we have teacher assistant available. This teacher assistant will be uh, for you guys. They will help you in terms of planners, performance trackings, assignments, and query solving as well, along with me, along with the tutor in our WhatsApp group. So this is how WIFI is unique. This is how we ensure that we provide best quality education. I hope your uh, your journey with Wifi will be a good one. One big news that we want to give you to people, all those who are not giving SBR this time, but want to give SBR next time or this time, you can join our session with Aisha Faisal because Wifi has always a practice of introducing good teachers. As I said, it's about our methodology with a good teacher becomes explosive. So Aisha Faisal, a very experienced faculty, teaching, having a teaching experience of five years, has now joined WIFI for FR and SBR. Today, she has an orientation at 9 p.m. after 1.5 hours. So if you are interested, at least join the orientation session and see the difference because this time we came up with a very good SBR blend learning methodology, first time ever similar to SBL, where there'll be more live classes with a supplement of recordings or above this, it's a flat introduction, flat 30% off on her paper as well. So that's the big deal. And that's for first time only. So we are giving flat 30% off on her paper as well. Interested students should join the orientation that we conducted after 1.5 hours. Guys, you can join our free APM WhatsApp groups. The link will be in the comment section in the description. And you can even get the link by messaging our support team for enrollment into my batch. You can contact the support team at this number and they will be happy to help you with the enrollment process. I hope you are satisfied with today's orientation and I'll see you soon 
in my live sessions. Contact the support team for registrations. Last but not the least, this is my number. You can contact me because I am the principal here at WIFI. So for any guidance, any suggestions, you can contact me at this number, official principal number of WIFI for any guidance related to any other paper. I'll be happy to help you. The planners for the paid classes will be shared by tomorrow. You can start your studies, be active in the paid WhatsApp group and for registrations, you can contact our team at this number as I mentioned. So thank you very much guys. I hope you like the session. Everyone happy with the session? Yes or no? Was the session useful? Things got clear? Did you enjoy the session? Please share your feedbacks. The focus will be on portal mainly. Okay. And uh, I will definitely give you the idea further how to start things once I share the planners. Thank you very much, guys, for being part of the session. See you very soon in my paid first live class. Do remain updated in our WhatsApp group for further update and start your studies. Thank you very much, my future APM consultant. See you soon in the next first life class. Until then, take care. Bye.